My question comes off of the discussion about Medicare for All and the Green New Deal and universal uh, care at home and all of these incredible new policies that are now on the agenda and are now becoming mainstream. And this is an amazing thing, that they're not any longer fringe ideas that can't really happen. We know they're going to happen. But the question that comes up all the time, where is the money going to come from? How are we going to pay for it? So the easy answer, which we don't talk about enough, is the military budget. Right? 53 cents, and everybody in this room knows it, you all know this, 53 cents of every federal discretionary dollar goes to the military. And we're going for wars that fail to do everything except kill people. And mostly they kill people of color in countries around the world. So the question is, the question is, how do we make the question of cutting the military budget in order to pay for the Green New Deal, for Medicare for All, for universal health care, for free college education, for all of these projects, how do we make that part of our regular discourse? How do we change the discourse so that instead of saying, well, you can't talk about the military budget, because you know, that's what keeps us safe and free, that we can say, actually, that's what kills people and makes other people hate us and makes us a lot less safe. How do we make that discourse real? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 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 I'm one of the things the Progressive Caucus does every year, we put together a people's budget, and we show a path forward how to fund the various issues, and we do provide a cut to the defense budget to show that that is a good source to not only uh, bring troops home, uh, not get involved in every uh, intervention in the world, uh, but that does bring an awful lot of money that you can put towards uh, health care, although I would argue you're going to have a lot of savings with Medicare for All as well, uh, people always want to say it's just going to cost money. Uh, whether we have debt-free college, uh, that provides us with resources. But there's other ideas out there too I just want to mention. While we certainly absolutely are talking about cutting defense spending, uh, there's a financial transaction fee uh, OID out there. European Union always does, already does it. People who do those several trades a second on uh, the stock market, by doing a simple 0.03% tax, you raise one trillion dollars annually that can go to other goods. So uh, for people on financial services, uh, you might want to take a look. Uh, I think there's a bill that here DeFazio has on that. But also it's not just uh, the spending and defense. We have to do a new authorization for going into war in this country. And Barbara Lee has been a leader on that. We are still using the same authorization that was in place after 9-11 by Democratic and Republican presidents who have used it way too uh, liberally, in a bad way, uh, and we have not come back to Congress like you're supposed to if you're going to war. Uh, one of the things that we were very proud of that we finally got on the floor a few weeks back was in a, a bill, a privilege resolution to enact the war, uh, war powers resolution about our activities in Yemen. And we have been working on this as a progressive caucus for a year and a half. Uh, we had every obstacle put in place by Paul Ryan. Twice at the end of last year, uh, we had him deprivilege a resolution. A privilege resolution means you have to have a vote in Congress. He found a backdoor way once on a bill that was going to delist gray wolves to kill Congress's ability to stop providing logistical systems and refueling and green berets and other activities in the worst humanitarian crisis on the planet where 150 kids die a day. And thanks to the elections in November and having a Democratic majority, the Progressive Caucus was able to go to Nancy Pelosi and get a commitment in the first 45 days. We would get a vote on that, and guess what? We got a vote and passed through the House of Representatives a bill that Bernie Sanders had passed through the Senate to make sure that Congress has a voice on what's going on in Yemen. So I completely agree with you on the budget. Let's take up those extra steps uh, as well. And that's another example of what we have to do. And Barbara Lee has been an amazing member of our caucus and leader on these issues.